Hello, this is Stefan from Conductor, and welcome to this lecture on Kafka security. So right now we've been dealing with an unsecure Kafka cluster. That means that any Kafka client can access your Kafka cluster and do anything it wants. They can publish and consume from any topic data, and all data that's being sent is going to be fully visible on the network. So we are missing some authentication, we are missing some authorization, and we are missing some encryption. That means that someone could intercept the data being sent because it is sent in plain text. That means that someone could publish bad data or steal data from our cluster. And that means that someone could, for example, delete topics. So all these regions push for more security and an authentication model in Apache Kafka. So there is a way to do encryption in Apache Kafka, and this is to ensure that the data exchanged between the clients and the Kafka brokers are going to be encrypted and secret on the routers along the way. So this is a similar concept to how an HTTPS website works. So the current state right now is that our Kafka clients are producing to a unsecure Kafka broker on port 9.0.2, which is the plain text port. So anytime we send some data, for example, some sensitive data, it's going to be visible on the network. But if we enable our Kafka broker to use SSL or TLS on a new port, for example, 9.0.9.3, then our Kafka clients are going to send some encrypted data over the network and this is going to ensure that we have security on encryption in flight when sending data into Kafka. So for authentication, we want to make sure that the clients can prove their identity to the Kafka cluster before they connect. This is very similar to a login concept with username and password. So for example, a Kafka client can send authentication data to a Kafka broker, and then the Kafka broker will, send, uh, will verify the authentication, and then the client will be authenticated. So authentication in Kafka is very important because once the clients have an identity, then we can apply some authorization. So to do authentication in Apache Kafka, it can take a few forms. There could be SSL-based authentication. So in this case, the clients can authenticate to Kafka using SSL or TLS certificates. But there's also SSL-based security. So plain SSL, which is to use username and password, Kerberos, Scram, and there are other SSL mechanisms being added over time. Uh, in the Kafka documentation, so you can check it out. But the idea is that you have different ways of setting up the Apache Kafka security. Some that I've seen in corporations is using Kerberos, some is, is using Scram, and so on. Now for authorization, once a client is authenticated in Kafka, then Kafka can verify its identity, and therefore we can start combining it with authorization rules. So like Kafka know, for example, that user Alice can view the topic finance, and user Bob cannot view the topic trucks. In this case, we have to maintain ACL, or access control list, and it must be maintained by administrators, and they must be changed to onboard new users in Apache Kafka. So in Apache Kafka, the security model is that you can mix encryption, authentication, and authorization to achieve a secure Kafka setup. And this will allow your Kafka clients to communicate securely to Kafka, and the clients would authenticate against Kafka, and then Kafka can authorize the clients to read and write to specific topics. Now, in terms of where Kafka security is, well, Kafka security is quite advanced and it's becoming more and more flexible and this setup is going to become easier over time. But I think personally that it is hard to set up Kafka security on a new cluster. It also is extremely hard to use the CLI commands against a secure cluster. So here are the properties you need to set for your Kafka clients using the CLI to make sure that they can authenticate against a secure cluster. And then you need to combine it in your CLI to bring that properties file and read it. Overall, it is a pain to use and very difficult. And at scale, it becomes very, very, very complicated. But thankfully, Conductor has integration with Kafka security. And you can keep on using Conductor the same way you have been using it, just by specifying a secure Kafka cluster in the Conductor setup tab. OK? Finally, Conductor also will help you visualize and manage your Kafka ACLs just in case you need to edit security of your Kafka cluster. So why do I just say this? Well, because when you have a managed Kafka cluster, for example, Confluent, Aven, MSK, something like this, it is very likely that your Kafka cluster is going to be secured. And so therefore, using a tool like Conductor instead of the CLI will make your life a lot easier and will make your developers a lot more productive when using Kafka security. So let me show you in the next lecture how to set up Conductor with a secure cluster.